this is a really good money making method. All you need is 50 rune crafting and runes, obviously, but you don't have to bring them with you. You can keep them in the bank. And today's combination is dust, but I don't have that. So I'm going to do earth. And then the second one could either be law, mist, or fire. So I'm going to do hopefully fire. And then the random one, I will not know because I don't have 99 rune crafting. But when you get 99 rune crafting, you can inspect your cape and it will tell you what your perfect is for the last one. So I'm going to actually put fire in the first spot because it gives me 23, 24 instead of 23. And then I might put law here. That's really bad, actually. We're just going to have to do that and then I'm going to have to change the air. Okay, we have 90. 6, 91, 64, 76, 59, 55, and 79. I think 91 was the best, or 90 is fine because it's just water. So this one is a this one is a win because I'm only using elementals, and I have 90 viz. I love that. So today, now that we have started this video. I was planning on doing the, uh, what's it called? The archaeology tutorial today. So I'm going to go and teleport to Orthenry probably is the closest place. And we're going to start the, uh, the archaeology tutorial. I was doing some barrows on old school and I'm nearing 300 kills. I needed a break. So I figured let's just do this and start archaeology. It is another AFK skill that I can do in the meantime when I'm bored and I don't want to do anything else. And uh, it's a pretty, pretty useful skill, I think, uh, money wise. I think artifacts and chronotes are still a lot of money. So how to remember where. I start the quest. The tutorial. It's going to be on the docks. We're going to speak to the tutor. The acting guild master. Are you here to sign up with the archaeology guild? We've just recently received some serious funding and we're in as much, we're in need of mud, as much help as we can get. Maybe why would I want to become an archaeologist, though? You want the sales pitch right? Need a reason to get down in the dirt with the rest of us working schmoes? Well, I'm sure one of these four core aspects of archaeology will at least get you to give it a shot. Wealth, power, fame, and stories. Wealth is the easy one. Not only will you find artifacts with their own inherent value, also have a healthy trade going on between guild members. Any materials you excavate, you can sell to other archaeologists. Power comes in the form of any magical relics you discover in your career. I have no doubt an adventurous sort such as you could gain great value out of increasing your power. Fame comes in the form of being the first to discover something of note or importance. There's more than one way to become a world-renowned archaeologist, and it isn't all just about being the most experienced of us. And finally, the stories. As an archaeologist, you will uncover long-forgotten tales of people and places from the past, events lost to time, and rediscover things both mysterious, mysterious and wonderful. Well, I'm sure that at least one of those motivates me. Do I need any qualifications? Those can come later. I'm sure we can start you off on the basics and you can learn on the job. Great. So, uh, what are the basics? First off, you're going to need some tools. The tutor hands you a set of archaeologist tools and you place them on your tool belt. Those tools I just handed you will cover most of your needs, uncovering excavations and restoring damaged artifacts mostly. However, we've been developing a new tool to do the actual excavation, 
strong enough to take out materials quickly, but delicate for when you need to be careful around an artifact. Take this bronze matic to start with. The tutor hands you a bronze matic. Add the matic to your tool belt. Now, excavation is one of two many main aspects of archaeology. You'll find a number of excavation hotspots across the various dig sites. Excavation hotspots have many names, but the first step is always to uncover them, like that senescent soil over there. Your main goal will be to slowly dig up an artifact from them, but while doing so, you will obtain a number of other useful finds. We'll discuss the value of these as we go. The blue bar above your head while you excavate shows your progress towards discovering your next damaged artifact. While excavating, you'll also find materials which are used to restore these damaged artifacts. To start with, you'll need to uncover each new excavation hotspot that you find. Try it on the pile of sinistin soil just north of me. discovered an excavation, now to start excavating at it. Yes, I found some soil. So basically how this works is, there's different hot spots, and then when, ah, a material, when you, it'll tell you what materials come from each one, and then what artifacts come from each one just want to collect them all basically and then artifacts require materials to restore them you find centurion's dress sword damaged when excavating you can make discoveries these damaged artifacts you discover can be restored but they require various materials left click to see the information the materials required to restore an artifact are shown here when you are ready Talk to Acting Guildmaster about the next step. So I still need some more Imperial Iron and Purple Hardwood. I guess I'll just talk to her. So, I found some soil, materials, and a damaged artifact. Upon inspection, it looks like I need some more materials. Before I can restore the artifact, though. Well, one way to find more materials is to screen any soil you found excavating. The acting guildmaster hands you some more senescent sto soil. Head over to the screening station and screen that soil. I thought that was an actual person. It's an NPC. Right. That should be enough screening. What did you find? Screening is a good way to find any materials you might have missed, among other things. The screening station will help you separate the soil from any useful items still hidden within it. So now, for the other main aspect of archaeology, restoration. Damaged artifacts require a lot of materials to restore them back to a pristine condition. To help, we have a material storage container that you can use to store any materials you discover. All damaged artifacts you discover while excavating can be inspected in order to see which materials you will need in order to restore that artifact and in what quantity. See if you can restore that damaged artifact you dug up. First, check out the material storage container, then make use of the nearby archaeologist workbench to restore that damaged artifact. So we're going to go to the material storage container, which is over here. Now I'm going to deposit everything because you can use it from the workbench. Artifacts can require large amounts of materials to restore. Storage container can be used to store the materials required for restoration, and these materials will be used directly from the container when restoring an artifact. So now we can go to the workbench right next door and make the dress sword. Centurion's dress sword. Oh, that's my first artifact restored. I should show this to the acting guildmaster. Congratulations, you restored your first artifact. There are collectors.
others out in the world who would love to get their hands on these artifacts. Volusia is a collector who can be found out front of the main building. She might be interested in adding that to her collection. You should go and talk to her. Wait, is that a centurion's dress sword? I'd love that for my collection. I'll trade you something valuable for it. Collectors have an interest in the artifacts that you restore, and will reward you for contributing artifacts to their collections. And she gave me the mortal cup. Volusia hands you a relic in return for completing her collection. Thanks for helping me with my collection. There are many collectors in the world who are interested in artifacts. You can see a list of those that are we're aware of on the notice board here. Museum is also interested in our discoveries and will reward you for your contribution. I'd best report back. So I have grown notes now, but I can't add them to my currency pouch yet. What is this thing? I can feel the power emanating from it and pulling me towards the strange monolith at the center of the archaeology campus. But Lucia handed me the relic in return for the artifact I gave her. It feels like it's drawing me towards the monolith. Really? Now that is unusual. We've been researching that mysterious monolith ever since Guildmaster Tony's disappearance. He was messing with it when he disappeared. Everyone has been too weary to get close to it, though. But if that relic is pulling you towards it, we should see if your connection with the mysterious monolith is any different. Be careful, though. Relics are objects of immense power, most of which have been lost to time. The power that is contained within these relics can be harnessed by offering them to the monolith. Amazing! You weren't pulled inside the monolith. Wait, that was a possibility. Um. Well, that's how Guildmaster Tony vanished. I probably should have been clearer about that part. We've been made we've made it off limits to the rest of the guild members, but there was something about how that relic drew you to it, and how confident you were. I just had a feeling things would work out this time. And look, I wasn't wrong. Wow, how many interns have you been through? I'm sorry, okay, don't judge me. We've been accident free since Tony's dis disappearance. Anyway, let's see if you can tap into that monolith and access the power that relic contained. You now have access to the relic power font of life. Increases maximum health by 500. We're going to put it in our first slot because it is requiring us to. I, you managed to access the power that relic contained. I'm impressed, Melamy ASMR. Here I was thinking, I was just recruiting another intern today. I wasn't expecting you to go one better than our very own guildmaster. I've only assumed the position of acting guildmaster because I believe Tony can and will return to us. That said, I feel you have the potential to climb our ranks very quickly. You have a natural affinity with this stuff. Speaking of which, come and meet me in the main campus building just west of here to claim your first qualification. We need to get you working at a dig site pronto. I believe you have the potential to become a world-renowned archaeologist. Melamy ASMR, you're a natural. More than that, you have a connection with that monolith out there, something nobody else has. I bet there are many powerful relics you could sacrifice to it. Feel free to make use of the Guildmaster's office upstairs. We're all making use of it for now, until Tony returns. Before you go, let me give you a quick tour on what's to offer here in the office. This table contains a map of all the archaeological dig sites. You may use it as a method of fast travel. Matty Ock sells all of your basic maddocks to get you well on your way on your journey. When you need, when you get new qualifications, there will be more available for you to purchase from Ezreal's shop. You'll need to get your hands on a bunch of crow notes should you wish to purchase anything around here, though. For now, stocking a soil box for free. I'd suggest picking one up as it will save you lots of space when out in the field. Go and grab your
yourself a soil box a soil box from Ezreal and then come back to me. Thank you very much. Excellent. You can upgrade your soil box capacity as you advanced through your qualifications. Now you have nearly everything you need to get out there and start excavating. The final thing to give you is this journal. Acting Master, Guildmaster, and Siwa Journal. All archaeologists should have a journal to make notes on their travels, but it also has some other handy features. Checking in on your overall progress, what's in your material storage container, and getting you back to the guild quickly are just a couple of things it can do. Feel free to stick it in your pocket whilst you're out and about. You never know when it might come in handy. And without further ado, I'm pleased to welcome you as a new intern into the Archaeology Guild. Please accept this certificate of qualification. This is to certify that Melamy ASMR has achieved the rank of intern. You now have access to the following. Archaeology Journal. Soil box stores 50 of each soil type. Access to the Guildmaster's office. Access to intern rewards in the Archaeology Guild shop and unlocked the Archaeology Intern title. Right, now that you're an official guild member, you should get out there and start excavating. We've got a team over at Caradet that could do with another pair of hands. I'll get someone to take you there now. Hello, Melamie ASMR. I'm over here. Hello, old friend. Welcome to the Caradet dig site. We need your help, Melami ASMR, to explore this fort to help answer some of Kilinor's oldest mysteries. Let me take you on a quick tour of what we have around here. If you find any artifacts, feel free to use the workbench to fix them up. The material storage is free for you to use as well. found this area to be rich in Semite silk. There's no artifacts as far as we can tell, but it is rich in material. Artifacts do seem to be abundant out here though. You should be able to find plenty. We need to break down this debris to gain access to the fort entrance. Then a key can be used to get inside. But first, you should read Doni's notes. The Rosian Empire's very existence was once the greatest of archaeological mysteries for us to uncover. And we achieved that here at Sintistum. And although the Empire was supposedly sprawling, it was so utterly destroyed that finding a near intact fort buried beneath the sands is cause for celebration. The monolith has a strong connection with something buried deep beneath this fort, however. Was the monolith itself Zerosian? No, surely not. It's beyond ancient. There is only one way to find out what the connection is. We must dig deep at Caridet and discover what lies beneath. I love when they do those like um, voice acted cutscenes. They're so nice. But I'm going to put my I got all of these charms just from doing Slayer yesterday. I did so much Slayer. Um, I'm at 47 already, and I got 60 necromancy, so that means that we can do the, um, the Moker mini quest to finish the tier 50, and then work on the tier 60, probably in the next RS3 episode, if I remember. <laughs> Um, so for now, we're going to look at this excavation site here. It's going to be the new hotspot that we have to work on. So as you can see, this hotspot has two damaged artifacts, the Venator Dagger and the Venator Light Crossbow. There's two types of it materials, the Third Age Iron and Sarosian Insignias. So I basically have to look here now in my little book and see. 
there's a bunch of mysteries and special researches for each area. But what I want to know is the collector information. Now we're going to be looking for the Venator dagger and the Venator light crossbow. But to make it easier on us, we could always get the, um, the collection, like the artifact itself, and it'll tell us what collection it's from. But you can also look here at all of the different collectors. So I'm just going to AFK and find the two different artifacts that I need. You want to follow the little time sprite, because it increases here, yeah. You've started to focus on a time sprite when excavating at a location that it contains damaged artifacts. A time sprite will position itself over one of the excavations in the area. By following the sprite, you can increase your focus, which will award excavation benefits. So you see how it says 10% increase to XP after you get to 40 and then 100. It will reduce your, once you get to 100, it increases your precision times two. So it's pretty nice. It's basically, you should always follow the time sprite. It stops people from AFKing too hard, but you could still AFK if you wanted to. You'll just collect more um, materials then, more progress towards the artifact. So, I remember when archaeology came out, it was back when I was playing RS3 like 12 hours a day, and uh, on my hardcore, and I played day came out and I was like I remember everyone was here at launch and we were trying to figure out how we opened this <laughs> debris and then when we opened it we went inside and it was like whoa this huge like temple it was really cool I love doing stuff on release it's so nostalgic because it's like everyone is there it's like a huge community thing I love that So, I'm just going to AFK this and get the artifacts, and then I'll be back. So, I think it's been like a little less than an hour. I got two daggers and three crossbows. You only need two of each. As you can see, like I said before, you can just inspect the artifact, and it'll tell you what collections it's used for. So, I only really need two of each for now. We're going to take them to the workbench, and we're going to restore them. Hopefully I have enough artifacts. I should have enough uh, materials for the artifacts. Should be a good chunk of XP here. This is where the majority of the archaeology XP comes from. Excavating the materials and the artifacts is not a lot at all. Oh, I can only do one. Oh no. What am I missing? I probably should have just done two and then two. I need more 30H iron. Okay, so there is a spot in the uh, dig site for 30H iron. Though. I'm just gonna do that instead of uh, getting more artifacts that I don't need. So all across Gilinor, there are caches. I believe they're called caches. Yeah, material caches of different types of materials that you might need. So that way you don't have to keep excavating from the remains. You can just go to these caches and get the materials that you need to finish the artifacts. So I'm just gonna get the 11 that I need and then uh, we can turn in these to complete the collections. It should auto update. This is so nice. When archeology span came out, I don't think you could have had the screen open at the same time. So you're excavating, so this is pretty nice. I mean, I could be wrong, I don't really remember. But, okay, so I think one of them is for Volusia. Yep, yeah, okay, so she's got the first two. And then the other one is from Zerosian, the guy in Barak. So we're gonna go to Barak. And this guy is gonna be the West Bank. Why my archaeology thing is 
gets Tim pinned up here. Here is the guy. He's also the emissary for Zeros. Alright, perfect. Now we've completed that. I'm gonna add this to my currency pouch and we have an extra Venator bow, which might prove useful in the future, but right now don't really need it at the moment. I'm just gonna put it back in the bank in case I want to redo the collection again, because at some point there are points in archaeology where you will feel stuck, where like you can't quite get to the next level, so you might want to repeat the collections over and over again to keep getting more crow notes. Um, so I might use it for that. So I believe the next thing we have to do... I forgot I have to use this for now. I can't use the, uh, the book yet to teleport me. That's not until later. Alright, so now what we want to do here... The next step would be to figure out what I need to open this debris. Let's find out. I just have to excavate it. So I have revealed, I have uncovered a mystery called Breaking the Seal. It says, when you when training archaeology, you may uncover mysteries from the past. Completing mysteries will earn archaeology XP, and some may unlock additional rewards. You can view your mystery progress from the archaeology journal. Now, um... Mysteries... Breaking the seal. I am currently looking into this mystery. I believe that this one is just breaking the seal. Like, literally, to finish the mystery. That's the last of it. Now to get through this barrier. Now to open this. Okay, so how do I open this? Maybe Dr. Nabanik can help. Hello, old friend. Welcome to the Caridet dig site. Now to get inside, you're going to need that seal. It's going to need restoring first, though, as it is a little damaged. You're handed a Centaurian seal damaged. Okay, hopefully I have the requirements for it. Cool, I do. Perfect. Now do I just take it down there? Now to open this, you hold the seal up to the wall. An entrance to the fort is revealed. As the seal disintegrates. So we completed the mystery solve. Uh, the uh, breaking the seal mystery. And then this is the big underground temple. First spot is here. I think so. Okay, perfect. So this one has two artifacts as well. But first, I got a letter for reaching level 20 archaeology. Allow me ASMR. I'm well aware people generally don't view me with fondness, but I'm in need of your services at the Infernal Source Dig Site by the Jolly Boy. As both an archaeologist and a bodyguard, my last Darv, my last bodyguard, wants to avoid anything even remotely connected with Sirach Magis. Your past discoveries are spectacular, and together we shall achieve greatness. Mavario. So that means I can go to another dig site. And I think we're gonna work on gonna work on the um I wish there was a bank in here but I'm gonna work on the next hot spot and come back tomorrow because it's almost four in the morning and I should be going to sleep so I'll be back tomorrow after I have excavated the two new artifacts hello it is tomorrow and I have completed the two artifacts from the last hotspot that we were at. So I'm going to go ahead and restore them. I feel like sometimes when I'm switching between my speakers and my microphone headphones, it doesn't catch RuneScape's audio for some reason, so I don't know. But anyway, we finished those two, and I also got some pages 
while I was collecting the artifacts. I don't remember what these are for, but we're going to go ahead and read them anyways. I figured out the audio. Alright. If I must discipline just one more of my guards for forgetting the Ford prison access code, I think I might just lock myself in a cell and sentence myself to life imprisonment. Better that than having to deal with this incessant incompetence. I know my vampire locks are tricky for the simple-minded human brain, but security within this fort is paramount, and they're not that difficult to remember. Just review the current prison log and look at the intimate inmate references. The code order relates to the ascending order of sentence, ignoring those prisoners still awaiting sentencing. Press the buttons in that order. See, not hard. Also, not particularly secure. But what am I to do if I'm only given the Empire's dregs to run this place? Custodian Stepan Jovkai. Prison log. Herein contained are details of the current population of Karadet's break. Custodian Stepan Jovkai. Name. Custodian Percival Rogers. Race. Human. Male. Inmate ID. SH598. Crime insubordination. Remaining sentence. Awaiting sentencing. Notes. Talking back to superior officer. Officer. Name. Zilgar Trog. Race. Demon. Sutsurath. Inmate ID. IC-355. Crime. Treason. Attempted assassination. Remaining sentence. Eternity. Notes. Solitary confinement. Demon trap. Name. Sergeant Cyrus Ward, race, human male, inmate ID, BL-599, crime, dereliction of duty, remaining sentence, six months, notes, found asleep during watch, night watch, wow, that's why he was sentenced, okay, that's kind of messed up, name, Pontifex Genevieve Shadam, race, vampire female, inmate ID, SH-203, Crime overfeeding. Remaining sentence four months. Notes to be fed animal blood while incarcerated. Name Aurora. Race I seen female. Inmate ID SM32. Crime heresy. Remaining sentence five years. Pledging allegiance to Zeros would commute sentence. Notes. The virtues of Zerodomen within confines of the Empire. And lastly, name Lemistard, race Majorat, inmate ID SH2, crime sedition, remaining sentence awaiting sentencing. Notes a Praetorian should be coming to claim him soon. I've never had the pleasure of incarcerating a projected demon form before. This will be tricky at any moment. It could opt to destroy its physical manifestation and allow its demon demonic soul to escape to the heart of pandemonium. A week ago, that wouldn't have been an issue, for the Legion Dukes could have invoked a clause in their contracts to have them held, returned, or destroyed, as was seen fit. But demonic contracts are tricky things, and the Lord of the loss of Lord Zeros would have felt voided many of them, no doubt. No, this one shall remain in my custody, even if I have to break some of our own rules for how prisoners are treated. Trog brought this on himself, the traitorous hound. Pater Dis, that is to say, Father Lucius, I more than suspect he might have some idea of how to handle the situation. He forgets how perceptive us vampires can be. I've seen his subtle tells, and I've seen the small phylacteries. Some of the recently arrived Praetorians are carrying the thing they refer to as Do Diab Diabolus, and I have sensed that they what they contain. Not that I'll let on any of this, of course, only that I require his assistance to incarcerate a de demon soul. Cultists are dangerous people to deal with at the best of times, but those wishing to keep that knowledge secretly are duply so. Duply or doubly, custodian Stepan Jokai. And the last page. The prefect has ordered me to deal with the food shortage with regards to my prisoners. I've worked hard to present to her that I am a rational being, yet she still seems to view me as a monster. I'm not just going to kill.
kill two birds with one stone, as she suggested, and just eat them. I have principles, damn her, and I take my role as custodian seriously. I am responsible for the well-being of those in my care, criminals or not. No, I shall extend to each of them an offer. If they would serve us in the defense of this fort, they shall be freed, and then they can earn their rations. It should be simple enough with Cyrus and Percival, for while they are far from model soldiers, they are of the Empire, and both have family here. Genevieve is a different matter, especially considering her crime. I will suggest to the Prefect that to just cut her loose as an ad hoc venator. She can get her fill on the enemy and not be a burden on fort supplies. It's effectively a death sentence, but then so would be to leave her locked up. And then there's the Icene, your typically stubborn and biased Ceratominist. There is no way she will renounce him and embrace our Lord's arrows. And even if she did, I would never trust it, even though I know such creatures do not employ subterfuge. Drog, however, can remain in solitary confinement and rot in the trap for the rest of eternity for all I care. Responsible though I may be, we all have a line, and he has crossed mine. Custodian step in, Jokai. Now I don't know what to do with these pages. So the custodian pages are for the achievement prison break. Pages one and two to Liam will give you a broken dial. Like this is the prison door. Yeah. Any joy figuring out this door yet? Maybe. I found a couple of pages from the prison custodian's journal. I wonder if there is a clue within them on how to open this door. That's great progress. As is mine, I found the missing dial. Here, you do the honors. It won't open. There must be a way to unlock it. That seems to have fixed it. Now for some sort of code, I guess. Okay, so based on page two, he said what? Review the current prison log and look at the inmate code references. The code order relates to the ascending order of sentence. Okay. So in ascending order. So that's a waiting sentence saying this one is eternity. So that one's going to be last. So ice is last. Blood is six months. Uh, SH is four months. And this one's five years. So we have SH, BL. SM and I see so it's it's shadow blood smoke and ice shadow blood smoke and ice Was it right? Oh, I did it. Awesome. It worked. Well, you have found some more information about this prison here. Let's go in. I think this is just more... This is just more um, archaeology. Study cell door. I should come back and study this later once I have access to a research team. Can't seem to pass through this barrier. Okay, so I could just do this spot, which I don't know what level it is. 47, okay. So I can't do anything in here yet. What is this? Growing up, I always dreamed of something like this. I never thought I would get the chance to be out in the field learning lots about our history. Take this ancient mechanism, for example. What do you make of it? I don't know. Let me take a look. Interesting, right? My research has led me to believe that there is has some good this has some control over that locked door over there, but it doesn't appear to work right now. If we could find something that fits in that slot, we might be able to get those doors open. Okay, interesting. Now let's go back to I don't know what spot I have to do next. Or what spot I unlock. Ah, uh, ch 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 Okay, so we did Venator already. We did. We did not do the Legionary Remains. I did not do that one. I didn't know where that one was, but I did the Castra. 
so I have to work on legionary remains. Where is that? Oh, is it over here? Wait, what? Is it in here? Okay, yeah, it's in here. Study the barracks rubble. I can't do that yet. Okay. So I guess this is the next spot I need to do. I skipped a spot. <laughs> the Primus Elementus Standard, the Legionary Gladius, and the Legionary Square Shield. But first, we're gonna go and turn in our these that we have collected. I wonder when I can teleport to the I don't remember. I think that's at 99, maybe, possibly. I don't remember. I don't know if I have to upgrade my book or something. Perfect. So now we're going to work on these three, and then we'll work on these two, and we'll finish Zerosian 1. I am going to end this episode here, though, because I feel like it's been a while, and uh, it is a lot in one video. So I hope that you enjoyed this, and thank you for being here. Now, we are starting our archaeology journey out of all of the skills RuneScape has to offer. I'm having a lot of fun. I hope that you are too, and I will see you next time.